Outrocast. Good afternoon or good morning to you. You're West Coast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's morning. So you still have the coffee and all that? Still got coffee. Yeah. First cup. Got it. Good day <laughs> for you so far, aside from having to do press. Uh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't I don't mind doing press. I like talking, I like talking about uh I like talking about it. <laughs> well, fun. talking about yeah. it, meaning uh, yeah. first there's the sometimes I think about dying, getting the vinyl and the digital release. When did you yeah. find out that it was getting the vinyl release? Because that's kind of a landmark special thing. Uh, I found out when I decided that I was going to pay to do it myself, <laughs> which may which may have been a which may have been an ill conceived uh, thing, but. Um, I was talking to Rachel, the director, about it, and you know, we both agreed it's like it's just cool to hold something in your hands. You know, we work in such an uh, such an art form where, <clears throat> you know, aside from like if if you have like an esoteric uh, Blu-ray collection or you know a vinyl collection or something, it's mm -hmm. very like it's not super tangible, and so having this sort of like you know totem to hold as like a a marker of like we we did this thing we made it so you know it was a it was an investment to i i make the joke that it's the most expensive piece of vinyl i own <laughs> well it's a thing that you can always give out to people as holiday yeah. gifts if they don't fly off the shelves so yeah either right. way you prepaid a holiday gift how's that yeah exactly yeah all all of my all of my uh all of my relatives and friends, regardless of if they have a record player, are getting one that's coming Christmas. Yeah, well, that yeah. is not your only <laughs> notable credit. I mean, recent work of yours that I loved is Kevin Can Go F Himself, or Kevin Can F Himself, rather. And you have the additional music title, but we're on eight episodes or so. Are you allowed to say what you worked on specifically to that show? Um. I mean, yeah, yes and no. I mean, you know, that that score is Keegan DeWitt. Um, and Keegan often brings me on for, uh, you know, I specialize in, um, I specialize in, you know, uh, uh, orchestral arranging, working in sort of like um, out of the box, like arrangement of, you know, organic instruments is sort of like my forte. So uh, Keegan and I are longtime collaborators. I, uh, we, you know, we're in a band called Wild Cub together. I produced the first Wild Cub record and played drums in the band for a long time. And um, yeah, we've been friends for the better part of, God, I want to say 15 years. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he'll bring me on when he needs like uh, some extra hands on a project. And TV is always that way because the, the turnaround time on TV episodes, especially for something that's like, I guess you could consider an AMC like network TV, like the turnaround times on that are like you know you have you sit down at a spot for a spotting session on like a tuesday and then you got to deliver an entire episode's worth of music on like a thursday so it's you know it can be it can be a lot so um uh but yeah i mean you know a lot of that a lot of that you know i i did a lot of the drum cues um i mean we collaborated you know it's not like hey man you write this i write that it's all keegan's score but um you know with uh a lot of a lot of what I worked on was a lot of that um, sort of drum percussion -y, you know, kind of frenetic uh, sort of world because I'm a drummer. Uh, that's my yeah. background. So, yeah. The reason I asked about that credit in, in, you know, specifically is because it was a without giving too much away to somebody who hasn't seen it. It's a dual sitcom trope show and a drama so you have right, the things right. that you would expect coming in and out of a sitcom commercial break and then dramatic stuff so meaning one right. person shouldn't be able to write all of that music right well it was funny so keegan had this idea where he um he was like it, that was his idea of like going in and out of the thing being like i wanted to um i can't remember i think that the show was maybe called newsroom or something the news it was like an old uh, but he he was like, what if we had these sort of like stingers that went in and out? So he came over one day and uh, and I just, you know, for probably about an hour and a half, we just, you know, I sat at the drum kit and came up with these sort of kitschy, you know, like drum fills and this other stuff. And then, you know, he went in and put like guitar and, and bass and all this other stuff on it. And it worked really, really well. I mean, that was that was great because they they just had a library of those of those uh you know sitcom stingers that they could go in and out of the episodes with it was it was fun to make yeah 
Sounds great to me. Now, you mentioned before the <laughs> yeah. band background, and I find yeah. that more than half of the people who are working composers these days in TV and film were band people that had record deals and all that kind of thing. So what was your yeah. transition from being band guy to composer? Because totally different worlds. Well, it's actually, it's sort of the opposite for me because I started into the band world going from composer into band world. So I studied music in college, um, you know, played in orchestra and studied composition and uh, also studied like production and recording and all that. And then I moved to Nashville um, out of college to, you know, had to do an internship, like at a record label, which was, whew. <laughs> Everything <laughs> except about the music. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, so, and then I found myself in Nashville you know, working, uh, working in bands, doing production, touring, doing all of that. And a lot of my, um, a lot of my background in the sort of classical world, if you want to classify it that way, kind of fell by the wayside because, you know, it was a lot of pop music. It was a lot of, um, yeah, just like touring band stuff. So, um, you know, after, at the end of my stint with Wild Cub, I, I played in a couple of other bands and I sort of got, I got back into a lot more producing and I started getting jaded by the whole thing. And uh, the, <laughs> I, I was driving around in this 99 Honda Civic and my, um, my aux, I had this, you know, really cheap, you know, stereo that I had installed in it and the aux cable broke on it. So I couldn't listen. I could only listen to the radio in that, you know, driving around in Nashville. Nashville's a big driving city like L.A. So yeah. um, the only options available on the radio are like a lot of like um, uh, a lot of like country station, a handful of pop stations that are you know relatively decent. But it's not really my vibe that I want to listen to. And then the classical station in, in Nashville, which is one of the best classical stations in the country because they're so good at not just programming like your sort of standard repertoire of like Beethoven and Mozart and Bach and Brahms and et cetera, et cetera. They right. will program a lot of new composers, a lot of um, 20th century, 21st century composers. And <clears throat> so that sort of like, I was driving around just listening to pretty much that all the time. And that sort of uh, sparked uh, a, I don't know, like a, it sparked something for me, which is, which is nice when you're in your, you know, uh, early thirties and you're looking for something to inspire you musically again, cause feeling like you'd already done <laughs> so much of it touring around the world and all this. And so I started writing, uh, I started, you know, I got back into writing for classical, I wrote a string quartet, I wrote um, a piece for larger orchestra. And then um, that sort of led into some, some film stuff. Moved out to LA, kind of the condensed version, but um you know, my mind's a little different than I think a lot of band folks, because you're absolutely right, like a lot of band folks. And I think that it has to do with like, you know, the band world has a limited shelf life. Like once you get to a certain age, you yeah. know, you either have to have made it huge and you can continue on as like a you know a legacy artist or you just have to be someone who's down to be like a road dog and just, you know, just break yourself, you know, touring into your you know 40s and 50s. And I think a lot of folks get wise and they're like, well, I don't want to do that, but I want to keep making music and composing is, you know, especially for film and TV or it's, it's one of those outlets. Yeah. To, to be weirdly name checky. I mean, two different members of Arcade Fire have film yeah. scores right now. Uh, Fred Corey from Cinderella is a film composer. Yeah. And well, so Owen Pallet from Arcade Fire, I mean, he, he'd been doing that for forever, though you know, to, to be fair, but yeah, but everyone, I mean, I just well, saw you the know, third what, person, like, Colin Stetson also yeah. in the arcade fire universe. So you have three yeah. arcade fire people competing for the same jobs, but right. the guy from passion pit, <laughs> all these people. Yeah. We love the music of, we don't necessarily realize they're also making the music for the film and TV shows. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, totally. so when was it exactly that you went, okay, done with the touring thing. I'm a composer. What year was it? It's probably 2014, 2015. It was at the end of whatever the um, uh, the record cycle for the Wild Cub album Youth was. So that was probably about 10 years ago because I think we just we were just talking about how that album came out 10 years ago, which is sort of crazy to think about. But yeah, so it was probably about 10 years ago. Yeah, you don't really put that band in your bio. 
that that intrigues me yeah you know it's funny i um there's not any specific reason i think that it's just like i'm i'm the type of person that you know uh uh here's my dog by the way hey buddy he's in the interview too we're gonna ask you questions later pal sure i'll um, get the dog to sign the consent form. Yeah, yeah he'll sign off um but uh it's not for any specific, I, I, I think I'm the type of person that I'm like, oh yeah, I did that, but you know, now I do composing. So what well, I'm not going to include, you know, stuff that isn't composing, but um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. Maybe I should put that, maybe I should put that in there. <laughs> Some people distance themselves. They have their, I'm a rocker bio. Then they have their, I'm a philanthropist right. bio, or I'm a film producer. Like when you see Dave Grohl's yeah. producing a film, he doesn't go, and he played in the punk rock and hardcore bands scream and this it's just more right that so yeah i, didn't know I don't if you know had yeah i mean bio. you know that's a, that's a good point i mean I, I guess you know i'm buddies with ian from passion pit and you know i feel like he doesn't talk about passion pit as much either i think it's just you know i don't think it's a lot of i don't necessarily think it's distancing i think it's just folks think of like yeah that was another lifetime i did that then i do this now you know the, the, it's not that they don't mix it's just like yeah i mean you're not gonna I don't know. I mean, I guess people do hire certain folks because they're like, oh, you were in, you know, you were in such and such band. So, you know, which is maybe not a good reason to hire folks to do, but maybe it is. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're right. You yeah. could be pigeonholed if they think of you as a metal person. Yet, they Yeah, totally. Asshole. I mean, if sense. I was in, a, if I, if my, if my background is I used to be in a metal band, I think I would, I would, that would definitely be in my bio. <laughs> I'd definitely be putting that in there. Well, did you have a metal background? Did you start off on 80s hard rock before you became a sophisticated person? Oh God, I wish I was that cool. No, my back, my, I was a, I was a, um, to, 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 to the chagrin of my agent, I'm sure, who's probably like, maybe not something you mentioned, but I, uh, my, I grew up, I played a lot of like, uh, I played punk, which was cool, but like I was, in, mm -hmm. I was in, I was in, I did a lot of ska. I was like a big, what, big ska What's wrong fan. with ska? You know, it's ska. It's third wave ska. What's the joke going around about, like the, the the New York Times thing about the fourth wave? And someone's like, "I really hope this isn't about ska." <laughs> you know, but uh, but yeah. So that was sort of I, I I didn't really get into what I would consider to be like you know good music. Not that ska's bad, but I I didn't get into what I would consider to be good music until probably like college. You know, like that's when I got into a lot of the more indie stuff. A lot of the more like. Um, I don't know, people who were sort of non-genre. In know. terms of yeah. the, the, the ska composer thing, I mean, Jeff Rosenstock is now composing shows and yeah. he was a, yeah. a ska guy. So Fair enough, yeah. I mean, I, I will say the one thing it did do is it, um, it I've, been, I've been writing charts and writing, you know, stuff for horn players since I was, you know, 13, 14 years old, so. I, it, at the very least, it helped me, you know, it helped me learn the, the transposition of an alto saxophone. <laughs> but the last thing I'll ask you in the, the polite sense is, are we allowed to know which project is next from you, where to look for your scores next? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the project I'm working on right now has been announced, so I can talk about it. But um, it's a, it, I'm working on, currently working on a score for a film called Color Book. Uh, directed by David Fortune, written and directed by uh, David Fortune. He just won the um, AT&T Untold Stories grant at uh, Tribeca last year. And so, um, yeah, I'm currently working on that. Um, I don't know anything about release or, you know, timeline or any of that. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a beautiful script. It's, uh, you know, the, what I've seen of footage so far is, is, is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really really excited about it. We're we're I think we're gonna make a really special uh, special film. He's 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 a very trusting director, which is which uh, is I feel very fortunate to be able to work with somebody like him who's like, yeah, man, what do you what do you think? You know, um, so uh, yeah, that's what's that's what's on the horizon as of now. Outrocast.